The new iPhone 16s were released a few weeks ago, and you've probably seen all the iPhone reviews by now, so you know the pros come in two larger sizes, they've got better battery life, and upgraded 48 megapixel cameras that can record 4K slow motion video. Insane. But we're not here to talk about all that. We're here to discuss the one slightly controversial feature everyone's talking about, and actually the feature that's surprisingly come to both the standard iPhone 16s and the Pro models, and that is camera control. So what is camera control? Well, it's a new button on the side of the new iPhones, and it is a physical clickable button even though Apple refused to refer to it as one, and the idea is that this will now act as the main shutter button when taking photos and videos. It's completely flush with the side of the iPhone, which should help prevent you from accidentally pressing it and opening the camera in your pocket, and it's placed at the bottom right of the phone, and actually most of the other reviews I've watched online say that it's quite awkwardly placed, but I actually disagree with them. When shooting in portrait, I find it quite a natural movement to get my thumb to reach the button, and when in landscape, for some reason everyone's taking photos with both hands, and their finger isn't reaching the button, but who's taking videos with both hands? Instead, I hold my phone in my right hand like this, and my index finger happens to rest perfectly on the camera button. It's also touch sensitive, and has haptics built in, so there's actually a lot going on here, and what that means is that it has a lot of functionality which I'm going to go through. So pressing the camera button launches the camera, even when your phone's locked, or you can set it up to open up other apps like Instagram or Magnifier, and then pressing it again will take a photo, holding it will start taking a video, and swiping across the button will help you navigate through the different camera tools that you can access using the button. Those are the basics, and honestly that's probably what most people are going to use this new button for, but it can do a lot more. If you half press the button, it brings up the function you used last, and you get some haptic feedback which tells you that the phone sensed your finger, and I quite like that because it's more similar to an actual camera where you half press the shutter button to get the camera to focus. Apple's apparently introducing a similar feature later this year, which will be a two-stage shutter that will help automatically lock focus and exposure with a half press. Then to access the full range of tools, you just need to half press the button twice, and you can see the menu comes up really quickly. These camera tools actually already exist on previous iPhones, except for the new styles and tones features, which I think are new and just for the iPhone 16s. However, this button makes accessing these tools a lot easier, as before, you'd have to swipe up on the screen to access them. Then, you just swipe across the button to navigate through the different options. The overall experience of using this button is quite good, but it can take a bit of getting used to. There have been times where I've wanted to half press the button, press it too hard and accidentally taken a picture, and swiping through the camera tools actually has momentum, so you can find yourself swiping past the tool or zoom level you're looking for, but otherwise it's very responsive and pretty intuitive to use. Now before we continue, I want to tell you about Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura helps me maintain my online privacy. It shows me which data brokers are selling my information, such as my home address and even my health records, and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. Aura also does so much more to protect me and my family from online threats I can't see. I get other features like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, and more without having to download several different apps. It's really easy to set up, and best of all, I get everything at one affordable price. To try out Aura's features, you can go to aura.com forward slash shiv to sign up for a two week free trial, which is also linked in the description below. Now back to the video. So once you've double half pressed, you get this menu. As I mentioned, it does remember which function you used last, but if I swipe across, we can start at the beginning. Exposure makes your image lighter or darker, and you can swipe between an exposure value of minus two, which is the darkest, to plus two, which is the lightest. Depth lets you control the aperture and adjust how much of your image background is blurred, and the higher the F ratio, the larger the depth of field, and the more in focus your background will be. But remember, this is all being done digitally on your phone, so it's not always going to be able to differentiate perfectly between foreground and background, and give you the same crisp outlines that you'd get on a proper camera. Then you've got zoom, and similar to when adjusting your zoom on screen, it kind of snaps to the optical zoom options, which are 0.5, 1, 2, and 5 times zoom, on both the Pro and Pro Max models, unlike last year. And it goes all the way up to 25 times digital zoom, which is the same as the iPhone 15 Pro. The next option is cameras. And this is great if you only want to shoot using optical zoom. 
So this is similar to the zoom function, but it will make sure you get really high quality images because the camera is using the physical lens to take photos and videos, rather than zooming in digitally and losing quality. Styles is a new feature that lets you cycle between loads of different photographic styles depending on your environment. So you've got options like vibrant, natural, luminous, dramatic, and loads more. And these can be quite useful if you just need a quick filter to add to your image. And it works well with the last new function of the menu, which is tones. Tones again lightens and darkens your image, but it seems to do it by adjusting the strength of the shadows rather than just adjusting the whole image. Now, there is actually another way to adjust the styles and tones together, and in my opinion, this is the better, more logical way to do it. If you press on this rounded square icon next to the live photos icon, it brings up a new feature where you can swipe between the same photographic styles we saw using camera control, but then you also have access to this control pad at the bottom. Now, this lets you control both the tone of the image on the vertical axis, so you can see the tone getting lighter and darker as I move my thumb up and down, and the color of the image on the horizontal axis. So moving my thumb to the right increases the saturation and amount of color in my image, and moving it to the left reduces the color and gives me a grayscale image. And because I can pick any combination of the tone and color, it gives me a lot of flexibility when taking photos, and I can find just the right balance depending on my environment. On top of all that, the intensity slider just below the control pad lets me choose how much of this effect I want applied to my image. So if I reduce it all the way to zero, you can see that it's just the same image as the standard setting. And these adjustments can be rendered during live preview, applied after a photo is taken, or even reverse later. So you can see this feature works a lot better on screen compared to using it via camera control. And this brings me to my next point. Why did Apple add camera control? So as we've just seen, all the camera tools that you can access through camera control already exist on your phone if you just swipe up on your screen when taking a photo or video. I'd probably say it's easier to operate a few of the functions in the usual way on screen. We've already talked about styles and tones, but even if you look at zoom, the camera control button isn't large or sensitive enough for you to zoom in fully in one swipe, whereas you have a lot more range and accuracy when using the on-screen control. So half of the tools are easier to use on screen, and I'd say the remaining tools like exposure and depth are rarely used. I've personally never used these features when taking photos or videos on my phone, and I think just because they're easier to access through camera control doesn't mean people are going to start using them. So that's the camera tools out of the way, but what about the more basic functions? Camera access and shutter. The camera button apparently makes it easier to access the camera, but did we really need another way to open the camera? You can already press the camera button on the home screen or swipe left to access the camera, which are as fast as using camera control. And did we all just forget that Apple added the action button last year? You can program this to open your camera and act as a shutter button to take photos and videos. So that also takes away the need for a dedicated camera control button. Then lastly, there's the integration with Apple intelligence. Once it's rolled out next year, Camera control will use visual intelligence to help users learn about objects and places. You'll be able to click and hold the button to pull up things like the hours or ratings for a restaurant you pass, or add an event from a flyer to your calendar. But you'll be able to do that via Siri anyways, and also, what's stopping the action button from doing that? It just seems like the camera control button added this year was a bit unnecessary, and even though it packs a lot of functionality and technology, it's not exactly adding anything new to the iPhone experience, and the hardware benefits it is adding could have just been done by the action button. What do you guys think about camera control? Is it a good addition to the iPhones, or could we have done without it? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.